the cast of Vanderpump Rules and The Valley do not sleep and do not disappoint. We have so many things to review for today's Bravo and Blaze with Jenny Blaze. So let's go. Before I begin, I just want to remind everyone that this is for entertainment purposes only. Be cool. Don't be all like uncool. Just as a reminder, the Patreon episode with all of the content from Phaedra Park's Drag Brunch in New York City will be available soon. Make sure you subscribe. It's also available for IG subscribers. But make sure you are subscribing, follow, share, like, comment, leave a five-star rating, and let's move on to Vanderpump Rules. There is so much going on. For the purposes of this review, I'm going to focus on last night's latest episode of Vanderpump Rules. Episode 9, Kiss Kiss Revenge Bang. The episode description is, Schwartz makes a startling revelation to Lala about a past hookup that sends Katie spiraling. James hosts a DJ night at Hotel Ziggy. Ariana and Katie encounter new issues in opening their sandwich shop. Brock drops a bombshell about a recent liaison. I can't even cover everything. But I wanted to make sure that I walked through the episode and provided all the behind the scenes, social media content that took place during filming. If you've been around since last year when I was covering Scandal, you may know that I was on top of everything. And that continued through season 11 filming. And I was just collecting. I didn't know what my purpose was at the time, but I knew that I wanted to collect every single thing that I could so that when we watch Season 11, we could put any pieces together. So that's what we're going to do today. I accidentally became a Scanval historian, I guess. And I think I've said this before. This is the only show that I've ever followed closely or at all, actually, while they were filming. So this is a very different experience for me this time around. I have not had an experience like this with any other show. So let's start. Okay. Episode nine opens with James picking out Allie's clothes. And I just want to say, I think that is so hot. I don't know why. Like at first I was like, am I weird for liking this? But I think it's hot that James is picking out the outfit, making sure it's steam. He's coordinating the purse with the outfit. He even has options. I love it. Allie was like, can you curl my hair? And he said, no, but I don't know if I'd want James Kennedy to curl my hair. Can you imagine if it wasn't like going well? I <laughs> just had a bitch fit. No, thank you. We also see Sandoval and Billy Lee. Billy Lee mentions that she's bringing her friend T to Hotel Ziggy. Tom also mentioned that he sent an email to Ariana for top market value of their home, and he's waiting on her. We also see a scene with Ariana and Anne FaceTiming. Anne is getting ready to go see Taylor Swift, and they didn't show much of this content on the episode, but... I have content from the Taylor Swift concert. Walk into the car and you know I wanna ask 
this is also the scene where we find out that Ariana is looking for a new assistant and Anne may be interested. <laughs> Love that. The next scene is kind of weird. It's Lala and Schwartz. Like, why are they hanging out? But they go to this place called Creations. Schwartz is talking about how he kind of enjoys benders. And I am not condoning that behavior, but I kind of get it too. <laughs> not the like getting wasted and getting messed up part of it, but like he said he does it. He likes benders even when they're healthy too, like just being completely sober, working out, you know, taking your vitamins, whatever. I kind of get like that too sometimes. But this is also where Schwartz tells Lala that him and Sheena had made out in Vegas like 10 years ago or 12 years ago. And I just thought this part was so weird because every time Schwartz has cheated, He's always been blackout drunk, you know, can't remember anything. And I just find it weird that he actually remembers this occasion. Little suspect there. It's funny, though, because right after that scene, they show Lala and Katie, where Lala tells Katie what Schwartz just told her about making out with Sheena in Vegas. And Katie seems so unbothered, and I love that. Okay, so now... We're, we go to Hotel Ziggy, and there is so much social media content from that night. Oh, what are we doing tonight, you guys, James? Hotel Ziggy on Sunset Boulevard. We're doing a, swi a night swim set. Come and, come and have a drink. Come and see me night DJ. Night swim? I don't remember. Hotel Ziggy on Sunset. That worked out. I was... What are you degenerates doing? Oh, yeah, we talked about this. Is it mom's night out? What? Mom's night out. Mom's night out. People keep telling me. I know. Look at you. You guys, please. Look at Sheena. She's so happy. She is so happy. Aw, are you a little drunky? She's just a happy girl. I love that. What are you doing? You're walking. Hotel Ziggy, we have Schwartz show up with Joe and Sheena winds up bullying Joe. And I have to say, I thought it was pretty ballsy of Sheena to just like go in on Joe like that. Like I get it. She was involved in covering up the affair between Tom Sandoval and Raquel, but I don't if I would ever go that far with anybody like even Tom Sandoval has been around me and I haven't like I feel like Sheena kind of attacked Joe like it was so unnecessary and I always root for Lala but I hate when she says disengage bitch and she said on the after show like if somebody touched my hat I'm gonna pop them or whatever and I'm just like you are not popping anybody I love your enthusiasm, Lala, but I'm pretty sure you're not popping anyone. Yeah, Joe winds up having like a breakdown on camera and I just don't know why. What has Joe's game plan been? From the very beginning of Vanderpump Rules, Joe started as Kristen's hairstylist. And when they were friends back then, Joe expressed that she didn't want to be on the show. She didn't want to be associated. She didn't want to like have that kind of fame, I guess. 
fame, whatever you want to call it, exposure. But now that she's like in this weird relationship with Schwartz, she out of nowhere wants to be on camera. It's just bizarre to me. I don't understand it. At Hotel Ziggy, this is this part made me so annoyed. Tom Sandoval, first of all, he's wearing a crazy, crazy jacket that actually triggers me. I don't know why. It's disgusting. I hate it. I hate it so much. I think it's weird that Tom Sandoval chooses that that moment on camera to go and talk to Ariana about the house situation. And apparently he like sent an email to her personal email and it didn't, they never had the house appraised. So the top market value that he claims to be offering her doesn't really, it doesn't sound like it's legit. And it sounds so very much like Tom Sandoval style. Like it's like Sandoval math. There's like girl math and Sandoval math. So annoying. He's like basing a number on nothing. Oh, well, I think it should be this. Whatever, dude. We see T join them at Hotel Ziggy. And we hear Sandoval ask her to go bowling after. Paparazzi caught Tom Sandoval wearing this ridiculous jacket. What's up, Tom? How you doing, man? It's good to see you guys. Hey, hey, hey Tom. Yeah. Question. So I don't know if you saw in the news, you know, Nick Via said that you broke the rules certain like photos of certain photos of you and Ra Raquel and the uh, special forces. Yeah. What do you what do you have to say about that? Um I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I definitely was not like uh showing it as a badge of honor. I think I was more just you know, you're very lonely at that place. There's no phones, no nothing. So um, but you know, it's got a podcast to do. Amazing, amazing. And you know, you know, people often say like, you know, you and Ariana was trying not to make eye contact. Do you think, do you think, um, do you think people are just over, over exaggerating or is it, is it, is it, are you guys like... We don't really look at each other too often though. Uh, and you know, people say that you still live at the same house. Have you guys ever bumped into each other at the kitchen? We don't even look at each other when we have sex anymore. It's crazy. Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do we think that Tom Sandoval called them? Do we think Tom Sandoval knew that they were there when he walked out? Do we think Tom Sandoval prepared with them and pretended to be walking out at the same time that they caught him? I don't know. What do you guys think? So also at Hotel Ziggy, Katie, Katie and Sheena talk about the kiss between Schwartz and Sheena and after hearing both Schwartz and Sheena explain what happened, I still don't understand at all. Did they, they kissed or they made out? I don't get it. All I know is that I really don't care. I don't care at all if they kissed. I don't. I do care, though, that Schwartz claims to remember this one specific time, but can't remember any of the other times he cheated on his wife. Wussy, pussy. Lala and James are out to lunch with Schwartz. Sandoval shows up late, of course. Says there was an incident with Maya. Um, we later find out more about that from Ariana, I guess. When did Maya eat 500 laxatives? What is going on there? Lala talks about having a water sommelier event. And I kind of like that idea, to be honest. I remember when they did that. And I have extra social media content from that event too, which I'll post next week. But this is also when Sandoval invites Lala over for his breath work slash exorcism slash emotional orgasm. Those are his words. So then we see Tom Sandoval doing his breath work and Lala walks in. In this moment, I just like could not believe that Lala kept a straight face. She walked in as if 
this is just a normal day. <laughs> and maybe, maybe she's used to stuff like that, like crazy things happening because she used to live with Randall. Well, I would have been like, dude, what the hell is going on in here? I hate this. She like basically watched him emotionally ejaculate all over all of us. I want to sue Alex Baskin for that scene. <laughs> I need therapy for that scene. It was just so gross. It really reminds me of Louis C.K., the comedian, who got canceled like around the Me Too movement time frame because it was reported that he would like masturbate and like make women watch him <laughs> like why why that's how it felt it was just gross exchanging books here i know So I don't know if we should be mad at Tom Sandoval or Alex Baskin. I think I'm mad at Alex Baskin for that one. <sighs> Next, we move on to the sandwich tasting at Something About Her. We have lots of social media content from that day as well. I think this was the day right after Taylor Swift, because if you look at Allie's hair, she has the same hairstyle <laughs> as the Taylor Swift concert. Lala in her confessional is talking a lot of smack about the sandwich tasting. And uh, I said it already. I'm going to root for Lala, but I just feel like she's overproducing herself. It doesn't feel genuine or authentic. I think she's too deep into this reality TV world. I don't know if we can ever get an authentic Lala. After the sandwich tasting, they all went to Sir for their Sir brunch, and we got a lot of more social media content from that day. see Ariana and Katie talk to Ken and Lisa at Sir. They give her an update on something about her. They also tell Lisa about Schwartz and Sheena circa 2014. Schwartz winds up dropping by and it's so great. Oh, I love this moment. Ariana and Katie are heckling him so hard how he fumbled the bag and now he's got sloppy Joe and Oh, they laid into him hard. <laughs> I loved it. Then we see Schwartz go and talk to Brock, and Brock tells Schwartz about Max and Katie hooking up. And first of all, Schwartz doesn't even seem like he cares. But also, does anyone else care? I don't care. Actually, I do care. I am so happy. I am glad that Katie hooked up with Max. I hope she pegged him with that BDE that she's got. Mm. 
Katie. Mm. Yes. Love. I love it. I hope she does it again. I hope she does whatever the hell she wants. But that secret was kind of kept tight because it didn't get leaked until August 14th. After that, we see Sandoval show up with T and they talk about how they just went bowling. We have paparazzi content from that. Yeah, how are you doing, man? How's your night going? No, hey, Tom, 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 the ballet is all the way down there. Oh, thanks, man. Wow. So, what's up, Tom? How's your night going? Great. How are you doing? So, good question. Do you have a type of girl to date? Uh, <laughs> which is so embarrassing awkward and weird sandoval leaves t with brock brock and t are at the bar during brunch sheena and ariana come over ariana is so nice to t but she is not shy about telling T what's up and says, don't waste your time with a 41 year old narcissist. She proceeds to tell T that she's the prize. Sandoval is not the prize. And we even see how she, Ariana is telling T how Sandoval was fucking her best friend while she was in the house. It was so good. I, I kind of love that. Brock also tells Sheena about telling Schwartz about Max, and she gets kind of mad about that. I don't know why she gets mad about this, though. We then see Brock approach the whole group where Katie's at with Lala, Sheena, Ariana, and Brock goes and tells the group that Katie and Max hooked up. And I wish Katie would have just been like, and... So, I mean, she kind of did, but it felt like not confident enough. It didn't feel like, I don't know, she wasn't channeling her BDE in that moment. And I wish that she did and was like, yeah, so I'll do it again. What? What's your point? <laughs> oh, Brock tries to call out Katie, like saying, oh, it's a double standard. It is not a double standard. I don't give a crap what anyone says. Schwartz making out with Raquel is nowhere near the same as Katie hooking up with Max well after all of that stuff went down. Who cares? Love it for them. Love it. Lala was kind of shocked. And actually, Lala and James were like, whoa, that is kind of messed up because... Max is like Schwartz's best friend. <laughs> that sounds like a Schwartz and Max issue. I don't think Katie did anything wrong. Go Katie. In the end, Lala winds up leaving, saying that this whole group is weird because they can't like, sleep together or whatever. But I don't understand why they have Lala narrate. She goes through the list. She says, Ariana is lying about her finances. I don't know why she, I don't know why Lala's saying that. She said, Sheena's following people's locations. That is kind of weird. She has 56 locations. 56 people's locations. Schwartz is trying to hide that him and Sheena made out, but not really because he told Lala. So is he hiding that? And then she mentions Katie hooked up with Max. Still don't see what the big deal is about that. But in the after show, they talk about it again. 
And I still don't understand. Like, who cares? They also talk about Sheena and Schwartz kissing back in 2014. Who cares? I don't care. But the Ariana and Tom house dispute is pretty interesting in the after show because Ariana clarifies some things and makes some very good points. There's $100,000 worth of furniture in that house, and it wasn't mentioned in his offer where he lowballed her, which I'm sure he really lowballed her because that's his style. And I think it's a joke that he's in the after show saying like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to keep this house. Like, oh, you know, because I use it. I will use it. We record my podcast there. Like, he says the band plays there in the living room sometimes. Like, who cares? These are not valid reasons why you should just get a house. What's wrong with him? He's like, something's not right. Oh, this is, okay, this might have been the scariest part for me. They mention a few times that Tom Sandoval has talked about raising his children in that home. Lala <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. She goes, she goes, ugh, I'm going to throw up. And really, the idea, the thought of, like, being Tom Sandoval's child or, like, Tom San watching Tom Sandoval raise a child is terrorizing. I can't imagine that. It's, like, so scary. But Ariana is just pointing out things that we are clearly seeing, and I don't know why people are hating on her because she's – Stating facts, Tom Sandoval has no sense of boundaries or respect. We've seen that. He violates the no contact policy repeatedly. And I like how Ariana pointed out that you don't get to change your mind and make demands of people who are trying to catch up to your whims. Wholeheartedly agree. Something that's been bothering me for a while is this. Bieber loves you text message from Joe to Katie after they got divorced or after they separated. Apparently, Kristen said in the after show that Katie and Joe are both like Bieber fans. And I still think it's weird because now looking back, I guess Joe meant Bieber loves you literally as like a common ground with Katie, but it didn't land in my opinion. I think it's weird. It's even more weird now, right? Ugh. Um, I did like how Kristen pointed out that she does feel bad for Joe because Schwartz is making her feel like she's his girlfriend and she's not. It's really sad. It's like, actually, it makes me more angry at shorts wussy pussy finally they talk about the breath work in the after show and lala said it sounded like tom sandoval was getting fucked with a butcher knife but then lala goes into talking about you know letting things go with sandoval and you know she wants to move on people evolve but then she goes and says i imagine that sandoval has a needle dick like the size of a sewing needle so what is it, Lala? What are you doing? She's so confusing. But like I said, I'll still root for her. Real quick, The Valley, they had their second episode, Tip for Tat. The episode description is Mia is angry about Jack's pantsing her husband in front of the group. Jesse finds himself in hot water with Kristen and Luke over an inappropriate action. Jax's guy's night comes crashing down when he invites a surprise visitor who blindsides Luke. So my biggest takeaways from this episode of The Valley is the scenes with Jax and Kristen are really starting to make me question everything for like the last 10 plus years between them. Is Jax in love with Kristen? It's starting to feel that way from watching The Valley. But also... What I was not expecting is Kristen versus Brittany. If you remember from Vanderpump Rules, Kristen was always ride or die so hard for Brittany. She was mad that she wasn't her maid of honor. 
And to see Kristen say, shut the fuck up to Brittany or whatever she said to her was so strange for me to see. And it's just interesting because Brittany is riding hard for her husband as she should in that moment. But we know now that they're separated. So I don't know. This is just like a very interesting dynamic and I'm loving it. I love it. All right. That's all I got for today. Make sure you subscribe, follow, share, like, leave a comment and five-star rating for Bravo and Blaze on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget to follow on social media at Bravo and Blaze, especially Instagram. That's my primary platform and where I put all of these clips. Until next week, y'all. Stay lit.